So, uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, I am from uh, Saratov State University, and also I'm working for the uh, Russian Co Academy of Science uh, in Saratov. And uh, today, I will, would like to talk about in vivo uh, image flow cytometry. And uh, indeed, this work was done uh, partly under the umbrella of the uh, Photonics for Life. So uh, the goal of this tutorial uh, is to present the ultra, uh, ultra sensitive and high speed clinically relevant diagnostic and therapeutic platform of blood and limb flow cytometry, which is based on integrated uh, transmittance digital microscopy uh, and uh, multicolor photoacoustic uh, imaging, photothermal lymphography, and also photothermal uh, therapy, uh, which are realized for in vivo, real-time monitoring of individual cells, uh, cell structure and velocity, as well as detection and treatment of metastasis in sentinel uh, lymph nodes. So this is the goal. So you see here, uh, first of all, I would like to, to show the animal models, uh, which typically using is this study, this is the red ear or, or mouse ear uh, vessels, also blood vessels and lymph vessels as well, and also skin fold uh, chamber. You see here uh, some uh, examples of the uh, 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 video uh, imaging uh, using the, uh, this is uh, uh, moderate, uh, 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 moderate magnification of the microscope, and you see here some clearing uh, using the optical clearing agents, and you see here more precise uh, blood vessels here, uh, and this is for uh, high magnification, and you see here uh, some cells, and uh, here you see also high magnification, you see here the parachute like uh, the uh, erythrocytes in the very thin uh, microvessels, and also uh, optical clearing and high magnification can be used for uh, venulas, for example, and after clearing you, you see here uh, more or less uh, uh, high resolution uh, images which can be analyzed. So another, uh, maybe more popular in our studies uh, animal model is the uh, mesentery model, animal mesentery model, red mesentery model. You see here the uh, uh, the systematic circulation of the uh, uh, animal uh, organism, and uh, this is the chain of the mesentric lymph, no uh, lymph nodes, and this is the lymphatics uh, of intestine mesentery. Indeed, we have here not only uh, lymphatics, not only lymph microvessels, also blood microvessels, and they vary, uh, you can easily uh, to uh, uh, provide some transmittance uh, microscopy, intravital microscopy, uh, because these layers are very thin. Again, you see here uh, some examples, cells in lymph flow, uh, white blood cells you see here. Then this is the lymph microvessel, uh, this is the valve, and uh, this is low magnification, we have a high magnification here. Again, the blood microvessels, and what has happened in the blood? You see here again some deformability of the uh, movable, uh, of moving in the stream uh, erythrocytes. So, and we use the different magnifications uh, from the 40 typically to 100 using the water immersion uh, microscopes. So, very important to understand uh, and to detect uh, the uh, cancer cells uh, within the uh, sentinel lymph nodes, which showing the first barrier before the whole organism infection. So this is very uh, important to uh, detect cancer cells, especially in these uh, nodes. And you see here a lot of nodes. Indeed, uh, the sentinel means that uh, if, you have, uh, if somebody have a tumor here, the first, the nearest, will be infected first, so uh, for some time. Therefore, it's better to detect it earlier and after that to provide the, some uh, treatment. So, and I would talk about uh, that later on. 
So uh, let's consider first the conventional uh, lymphography, and uh, typically it's uh, which are allowed to map uh, these nodes, and uh, it's uh, well known that in vivo approaches can be provided by MRI with magnetic nanoparticles, then also lymphosynthigraphy uh, is can be used using the colloid nanoparticles, also lymphography with the blue dyes or quantum dots, and uh, but all of them are uh, suffer from the uh, limited assessment of the uh, uh, lymph node metastasis. And uh, currently, there is no uh, any in vivo technology to access metastasis with uh, uh, sensitivity better than the in vitro uh, approaches such as immunohistochemistry. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, this uh, diagnosis uh, of metastasis uh, in cancer patients is multi-step and invasive procedure. Here you see some examples how to use Evans Blue, you see here through image, because the uh, uh, lymph uh, vessels is not so well seen as blood, ves uh, blood vessels. Therefore, you need some uh, um, uh, staining and to inject some blood, uh, some, um, uh, some uh, fluorescence or uh, absorbing uh, uh, dyes. And you see here another example, fluorescein, and also uh, endotonin green as a, uh, imaging agents which use for uh, uh, image, uh, visualize the uh, lymph, uh, uh, lymphatics uh, and lymph nodes and also the lymph vessels. So, uh, the, so uh, the current assessment of uh, sentinel uh, lymph nodes, mapping biopsy and immunohistochemistry uh, no dis include no dissection as well. Uh, as I told already, is a multi-step, time and labor consuming procedure with uh, rather low sensitivity. And uh, incurable uh, metastasis may already be present by the time of initial uh, diagnosis. And uh, invasiveness, biopsy dissection, amplifies patient uh, morbidity. morbidity. So, and uh, uh, typically, uh, lymph is more challenging substance to, to diagnose than blood uh, b due to less absorption and less scattering, indeed, and therefore it's not well seen. And uh, the uh, lymph vessels are teeny colorless structures with relatively low uh, pressure. And uh, finding lymph vessels require additional labeling, as I showed already, and uh, lymph sampling. Uh, it's also important that for in vitro study, it is also not so easy. You have a lot of blood, but sampling of the uh, lymph uh, uh, liquid, uh, on, you, you, uh, you can get some only a few microliters of the lymph. Therefore, it's not so easy to use in the in vitro cytometry. Uh, uh, so the classical in vitro flow cytometry is impractical typically for detection of the uh, lymph uh, cancer uh, tumor cells. So this is the set of limitations of the in vitro, uh, summarizing the limitations of in vitro flow cytometry. This is artifacts due to invasive nature of the cell extraction from a living organism and possibility of salt of cell uh, monitoring in the natural complex environment and impossibility to estimate cell uh, survival and migration in a whole organism. It's, it's very evident, but we have to underline this. So this is the main idea uh, which uh, we try to develop. And you see here the uh, schematics of the lymph vessel. Very important and very uh, uh, and very attractive that the, uh, each lymph vessel has a valve, and this is functioning. So it may be, it works, really works, like uh, a, a, hydro, a hydrodynamic uh, cell within the uh, 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 in vitro cytometry. So o the only one thing we have to find this phase when uh, all cells, one by one, go through this valve. So then you can use 
uh, and typically within the uh, uh, lymph vessel, we can find white blood cells, a portion, a small portion of the red blood cells, and we are, our target is the, uh, the tumor cell. So uh, then you can use, as usually, for the uh, in vitro cytometry, scattering, or fluorescence, or Raman, or transmittance, and I will concentrate on the transmittance. Then you can use thermal waves, then you can use acoustic waves, and this is a lab, uh, uh, laser beam which are inducing all these uh, uh, detection modalities. So this is the idea, and uh, the instrumentation for the, uh, uh, for the flow cytometer, in view of flow cytometer, uh, which is based on the transmittance, dig digital microscopy, or video microscopy, uh, it's rather simple. You see here the, uh, the uh, red with the mesentery, which is open and which is lying on the uh, uh, microscope uh, stage. And this is the, uh, the uh, ima uh, not image, but this is the picture, uh, how the mesentery looks like. There's only a few, uh, uh, about 10, uh, um, 15 uh, microns thickness. Uh, and uh, then you have a big blood, uh, maybe a, a lymph vessel, then this is a blood vessel, and indeed, uh, in transmittance mode, it's very easily to, uh, to detect, to image it. So this is very uh, uh, impressive uh, uh, animal model, and the uh, animal can live maybe for a few hours, four hours, it's enough to make a, a study, good study. Sometimes you can uh, uh, provide the uh, back surgery and uh, but it, it could be done. So this is uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the key element of this um, uh, imaging system uh, where uh, the uh, uh, powerful, enough powerful um, uh, uh, objective is used using the water immersion and uh, uh, also the uh, another key, uh, uh, Part of this image is the CMOS camera or some other camera, very fast. And uh, you see here uh, the examples uh, of red blood cells again, parachute like here. And this is the flow direction. And also uh, you can image uh, some, uh, because we need some fast images. So we need to, we are able to use very, um, uh, very uh, high speed uh, cameras. And in, indeed, we are limited in the, uh, in the view area. And sometimes, only to count cells, for example, uh, we can provide some high resolution, so high um, um, speed using only one line of, uh, line of pixels. So it could be done. Uh, so indeed, uh, uh, this uh, microscopy allows to use some other models like fluorescence, and uh, uh, phase uh, contrast imaging and uh, whatever you like. So uh, this is the uh, principle of lymph test in vivo. And this is the time scale for 10 seconds. And this is the cell velocity in millimeter per second. This is very, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, real numbers. And uh, they are corresponding to the different phase uh, structures of the uh, lymph vessel uh, in the vicinity of the well. Well is closed. We have difference in, in the uh, uh, pressure uh, before and after the uh, well. And when it's opening, uh, we have some uh, moving of the particles of the cells. Then it became uh, uh, up to the maximum, and uh, we go to another phase, it go down, uh, then uh, they are closed, and we have some, and uh, we have some, uh, after the closing, we have some backward uh, directed uh, uh, flow. This is the peak, uh, uh, negative peak, 
and uh, then uh, all stages repeated uh, uh, ago, uh, again. So uh, to measure, uh, this is the range where we can measure uh, the velocity and the uh, cell structure, and uh, this is laser exposure for the uh, analysis of the, uh, of the uh, particles uh, of these cells. So again, uh, examples of the high speed uh, imaging of cells by transmittance uh, microscopy. This is the valve you see here, this is the cells. And this is uh, a valve nozzle, uh, uh, hydrodynamic uh, or uh, uh, like uh, hydrodynamic cell. Uh, it's a living system. And you see here pretty good images of the cells in the vicinity of the end of this open, a little bit open uh, uh, valve. So uh, another uh, example here, you see when the cells go one by one, it's very easy to analyze them. You have enough time to analyze them. And another, uh, uh, another examples, if we have enough big uh, fluence of laser fluence, uh, we can indeed change, and it's a biological reaction of the, uh, of the uh, uh, vessel wall, and it's easily shown here. So you can analyze not only the uh, normal situation, and also during the uh, laser uh, uh, action on the vessels. So you see here, uh, uh, very, very initial, maybe 10 years ago we did it, maybe more, uh, it was very simple camera, like uh, maybe much uh, worse than now the, uh, the people use at home. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, velocity of the uh, lymph is not so high as in the blood. Therefore, we have uh, enough resolution uh, to see these uh, uh, cells, and we have uh, uh, back and, fo and uh, uh, forward and back uh, uh, stream for the uh, uh, lymphocytes. And here are more faster uh, blood vessels can be seen. So indeed uh, we uh, can analyze when we uh, make a focusing in depth, we can analyze the stream in dynamics. Also we can uh, analyze also uh, in dynamics the cell wall, upper part of wall and the down part of wall and to investigate the interaction between the cells and the uh, endothelial cells, uh, moving cells and endothelial cells. So this is another example uh, how the uh, change the shape of the single cells circulating in lymph flow, and we can find the moving of individual lymphocytes. This is the steady state. And also you see here the red blood cells, which are, can be found. So this is uh, the indication of some inflammation within the uh, uh, within the animal, within this uh, system. So, and this also fixed, you have a pretty good image of the erythrocytes which can be analyzed. So another example is to, uh, it's unfortunately not movable now, but nevertheless you can see here, uh, uh, if, uh, only a part of a second change, and you see here how, they, uh, how two uh, red blood cells are rotating and uh, interacting, and, uh, and uh, we'll show later on how the different uh, cells are uh, interact. Okay. So, uh, uh, one more example on the, uh, on the uh, uh, cell uh, interaction and flows, and uh, the dynamic aggregation, disaggregation, and you see here, disaggregated particles aggregate, then smaller aggregates, and this is in living system, and it can be very uh, important to predict some inflammation or some disease or pathology. So also, I would like to show uh, examples uh, with the fast camera. And uh, uh, you see here the numbers. And we studied here the deformability. So you can uh, me measure the deformability of the cells within the real uh, flows. This is very important. And you see here a few examples. Uh, the first one is uh, three subsequent frames of uh, parachute-shaped red blood cells traveling through the capillary 
at uh, 0 0.4 millimeter per second. And the uh, deformability index uh, defined as the ratio of cell length, cell length uh, to, each, uh, to its uh, width. So elongation was here up to 3.7 in this A. For B, uh, we are uh, following the, uh, the uh, uh, looking for the interaction of the red blood cell and the white blood cell. They are apart. This red blood cell, this is uh, white blood cell. Then they are connected and they are deformed. You see here how they deform. This is a border. So you can use it for some uh, applications. So uh, you see here uh, another example of bifurcation and we have a uh, very complicated uh, interaction of the uh, red blood cells with the, uh, uh, with the uh, vessel, um, the, uh, vessel uh, walls. And finally, we have a very huge, uh, huge elongation up to 7.3 here. This is the elongated red blood cells. So uh, one more uh, example showing the, uh, the, uh, the platelets. Uh, it's not so easy, they are not scattering, they are uh, the, uh, and uh, uh, low absorptive uh, cells. However, they can be seen. You see here, it's the uh, slow flow. This is the high flow and they are elongated and can be calculated. Uh, another example showing here the erythrocytes and also white blood cells, and this is uh, uh, enhanced image. And you see here uh, they are transparent, these cells, and you see here some structures of the cell of the vessel wall behind this. So uh, indeed, we uh, can provide some uh, measurements uh, uh, to quantify this uh, the velocity. And we can use uh, straightforward technology uh, simply uh, calculating the pathway of the each cell, then overaging it uh, if you need. Uh, sometimes you need absolute value of individual particle and you can use it uh, for uh, some uh, uh, predictions. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are using the speckle technologies uh, to measure uh, the uh, relative changes of the velocity. And uh, we had a very, very nice uh, correlation uh, with the speckle measurements and the uh, absolute measurements using the uh, particle by particle uh, images uh, processing. So uh, you see here the, uh, um, uh, the uh, shuttle stream, uh, uh, shuttle stream uh, uh, movements of the uh, lymphocytes, and it's very complicated, but the, the oscillations and dynamics give information about the uh, pathology uh, as well. So this uh, mean diameter was about 170 uh, microns. They are rather thick in comparison to the, the blood vessels. Uh, and therefore, uh, the, and, uh, the velocity is uh, lower than in the blood vessels. So uh, another, uh, for, uh, another approach is, is are based on the uh, photoacoustics and photothermal. And today we hear the nice presentation about Claude Baccarat, who is a early, early pioneers of the, of the uh, photoacoustics, of optoacoustic technology. And uh, uh, therefore, I will only show our results. Uh, we uh, use uh, optical system. This is microscope, which integrated all uh, described modalities, including fluorescence, including the uh, 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 intravital uh, microscopy, and also, uh, uh, also the uh, photothermal and photoacoustic imaging. Uh, one of them using uh, photothermal using the uh, uh, typically uh, photothermal lens uh, uh, detection and uh, photoacoustic uh, uh, approach or method is uh, shown here. Uh, this is a laser which typically 
uh, we use the fiber to deliver light to the target. In that case, the target is the uh, lymph node, usually here lymph node, and this is acoustic ultrasound transducer, which are detecting these induced um, uh, acoustic uh, waves. And uh, this is two signals, which is uh, uh, normal time scale and a little bit uh, um, magnified time scale to show the pulse profile. And uh, the photoacoustics method in our case provides ultra high sensitivity because uh, the, we can measure uh, quantitatively uh, the absorption uh, within the cells, uh, which is too difficult to, uh, to, to provide using the, uh, using the uh, transmittance uh, fluorescence, uh, sorry, uh, transmittance uh, imaging uh, or intravital mi microscopy, uh, image microscopy. So it's provide non-invasiveness because the, uh, uh, the energetic parameters of light is not so uh, high and give high resolution, high contrast and detection within the depth to up to five centimeters. It was also today cited. It was proved in the uh, papers by uh, the Li Hong Wang and his group and now it's many other, in some other groups as well. And uh, a multicolor uh, uh, detector with different wavelengths. You see here we have a Raman shifter. We can change uh, the wavelength uh, using this uh, uh, optical parametric oscillator and uh, also use different kind of lasers here. And also nanoparticles provide, uh, in combination with the optoacoustic, optothermal detection, provides uh, molecular targeting of the cells, low concentration of contrast agents due to high um, uh, plasmonic resonance uh, uh, scattering within the plasmonic resonance as well as absorption in the near infrared and also uh, more or less low toxicity. So uh, uh, you see here uh, uh, the sketch showing how we can detect the uh, nanoparticles uh, using uh, this technology. So this is the laser beam. This is the particle that is small enough. Indeed, all uh, 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 it is heated by this uh, laser beam. And indeed, we can get different kinds, uh, kinds of the uh, uh, heating effect like a secondary infrared radiation, photothermal radiometry could, can be built uh, on this basis. Then uh, it uh, could be in induced uh, photomechanical stress, which could be also measured. Then it could be a thermal ex expansion uh, of this material surrounding the uh, nanoparticle. It also can be uh, measured. And also, optoacoustics uh, wave can be uh, induced by the pulse laser irradiation. Also, heating. And um, if uh, energy will be enough high, some nonlinear effects also arise due to vaporization and bubble formation, uh, cavitation procedure. And also, very important for in our case, reflection index alteration. So that may give us uh, uh, the possibility to use uh, the thermal lens, uh, for example, technology or other interferometric technology to, to measure the refractive index uh, change. So, and this nanotarget, it's not only the nanoparticle. It could be intrinsic nanoparticle like a melanin, for example, a dust within the melanoma. So uh, it could be artificial one, uh, 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 exogenous or uh, endogenous uh, nanoparticles. So uh, very important that this technology also can be used uh, to provide uh, resolution on the, in the nanoscale. However, indeed you need some reconstruction. It's a very simple reconstruction because if you have a nanoparticle and indeed the image uh, will be, this is diffraction pattern uh, limit. 
So the image will be uh, uh, blurred. Uh, however, if we measure the, uh, the thermal response and reconstruct, you see here, this is the pulse, pumping pulse. This is the thermal response of the material. And if we put probing beam, this is probing beam, which are showing us some uh, uh, phase shift of the wave and deformation of this wave. Uh, and we can go back and reconstruct using this simple uh, formula or more uh, complex formula, which are uh, uh, showing this decay of the uh, uh, thermal response. Uh, after, the, after reconstruction, we can uh, uh, reconstruct the real positions of the uh, nano targets with the resolution very close to the, uh, to the initial one. Indeed, uh, we lose some information, but uh, the response is very smooth. Uh, and therefore, the reconstruction could be uh, very uh, enough precise. So, multicolor, multicolor uh, photoacoustic lymphography. This is uh, uh, examples uh, of two lymphatic basins with the fiber schematics. And this is a mouse you see here. It's uh, to make measurements a little bit easier, and not to uh, to. In that case, not to use the uh, optical clearing, we remove some uh, skin here, you see. This is transducer, this is uh, fiber with the laser, this is uh, corresponding responses uh, uh, of the photoacoustics uh, uh, responses. And nanoparticles, uh, one kind was injected into the left, you see here onto the left, and another one, it was magnetic nanoparticles, and another, uh, gold nano, uh, nanotubes, uh, carbon nanotubes, which are uh, covered by the gold, uh, was used for the uh, right uh, mouse ears. And uh, both uh, kinds of nanoparticles quickly entered into lymphatics and migrated in less than five minutes. Uh, we found them uh, to the left and right cervical lymph nodes, respectively. So this is uh, approach how to image uh, cancer cells or some other pathology. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the optical clearing. Optical clearing, typically we use some glycerol or glucose, some other optical clearing agents which are, uh, allows us to equalize uh, uh, ref uh, refractive index between the scatterers and the surrounding media for a while, for maybe a few minutes, uh, up to uh, half an hour. And in that case, the uh, tissue, any tissue became more transparent. And you see here pretty good examples. Uh, this is ex vivo tests. This is uh, physiological solution. And this is the lymph nodes. Uh, and uh, after glucose application and glycerol application. And this is magnified. Uh, physiological solution, nothing seen. Uh, uh, at glucose, we see some cells, and much better uh, cells uh, images we can uh, get using uh, the uh, glycerol in that case. This is in vivo test for the native tissue and glycerol. This is magnified. This is normal. You see here pretty good cells which can be, found, uh, can be seen through the scattering, and now for a while not scattering media. So, and this uh, sketch showing uh, different structures of the lymph node and uh, 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 which showing that the optical clearing allows to have uh, much more details uh, uh, of the different structures uh, of, the, uh, of the lymph node and uh, cells as well in depth and so on. This is demonstration of the optical clearing application. So uh, uh, these um, uh, uh, figures show the different images uh, modalities, uh, especially for lymphocyte, for red blood cells, and melanoma cells. You see here, this is the intravital microscopy. Lymphocyte, we, have, we see some details. And indeed, we, have, we see the shape of the red blood cell. 
and also we have some see some structure of the melanoma cell. Uh, the fluorescence uh, image give us a little bit other information, and it should be also reconstructed and analyzed. Uh, and uh, this is the photothermal. You see here quite different uh, information because these are real absorbers. Here we see the phase image mostly and a little bit absorption. And here only absorption. So they are additive from the point of view. This is mostly phase. This is mostly, uh, this is refractive index change. This is mostly the absorption. And uh, quite different image of the uh, red blood cells. And you see here melanoma cells. We have uh, some dots uh, with the high uh, absorption. So, and uh, <clears throat> let's talk about the uh, ultra-sensitive molecular photoacoustic detection of the metastasis uh, in vivo at single cell uh, level. So this is demonstration. Uh, it was published recently in Journal of Biophotonics. And uh, uh, the uh, primary tumor was developed in nude mouse ear. You see here ear. Uh, we use Evan Blue to image uh, uh, lymph vessels as well. And also, photoacoustic detection was carried out using uh, natural labeling of melanoma cells by melanin uh, intrinsic uh, nanoparticles. And, uh, and melanoma cells was detected in ear lymphatics and uh, sentinel uh, lymph nodes during uh, tumor development. And you see here different stages of the tumor development. Each, uh, uh, each uh, spot here, this is the, uh, the cancer cell. And this is corresponding histology. And this is the, uh, the uh, photoacoustic uh, response, this counting of cells in the time, uh, specifically the melanoma cells. And this is the parameters of the uh, laser 840 nanometers and fluence about 100 uh, millijoules per square centimeter. So this is again the same uh, picture uh, 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 magnified and one week of melanoma development and these two weeks melanoma development. So uh, uh, we demonstrated uh, from our point of view, excellent capability of uh, photoacoustic and photothermal integrated technical platform for the detection of the earliest uh, micrometastasis that cannot be achieved by conventional assays. And what is next? Next to treat them. And uh, it's also discussed today that uh, uh, in the framework of the uh, acoustics, uh, uh, when uh, we detect first and then treat, increasing the uh, energy of the uh, acoustic waves. The same here and in many, uh, we, first we are uh, using multicolor uh, photoacoustic lymphography or molecular uh, photoacoustic detection. We have found these metastatic cells uh, and after that we increase the uh, intensity uh, of, the, uh, of the light and uh, kill uh, this metastatic cell. So, and this is the demonstration uh, how it can be done. And you see here the uh, 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 microscopic images, and this is photothermal response. And uh, you see here, this is the uh, sentinel lymph node, and tumor is here. And uh, 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 after the treatment, no signal, no signal at all. So this is the result of treatment. So uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like to say that uh, the presented clinically relevant uh, intravital microscopy and uh, photoacoustic photothermal technical platform provides blood and lymph cell flow image uh, cytometry, it's real cytometry, including detection of lymphatic metastasis and their targeted eradication in one non-invasive uh, intervention. And in vivo and ex vivo experimental results extend our understanding of lymphatic 
metastasis. It's also very important uh, to provide some fundamental research in this direction. And preclinical studies demonstrated multicolor in vivo detection of micrometastasis and single metastatic cells in lymphatic system with the high sensitivity. And uh, we have developed technological platform for lymph cancer tests that hold promise for the advanced molecular diagnosis and targeted therapy of earliest cancer metastasis with the clinical benefits such as using laser energy safe for human and low toxic nanoparticles and sterile disposal fibers to deliver uh, laser light. Uh, this may pre uh, preserve sentinel lymph nodes as an immunological barrier against cancer cells and the voidness of surgical complications when we kill bacteria, uh, sorry, cancer cells uh, not uh, far from the um, uh, tumor. So for further reading, uh, you can look to the special issue of the Tuvas in vivo uh, uh, flow cytometry which was recently published in the uh, Biophotonics, Journal of Biophotonics. And also this is upcoming uh, book which will be published very soon, Advanced Optical Flow Cytometry. And uh, uh, I'm very glad to, to say that uh, a few groups from the Photonics for Life are involved in this uh, project. So, and finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, my uh, gratitude to the Yekaterina Galanja and Vladimir Zharov. And Yekaterina, she is originally from the Saratov State University. She is still working for us. And uh, now they are both in the Philips Classical Labs of Nanomedicine and University of Arkansas for Medical Science. And this work was supported by the few grants, including Photonics for Life. And also I would like to say that uh, uh, this uh, rather big uh, government, Russian government contract was given us, uh, in this it was a, a strong competition, given us uh, because we are, the, um, uh, we are in the uh, Photonics for Life Consortium. So it was a special competition and we are the winners. And this adds some uh, funding to this work. Thank you for your attention.